and welcome back to another episode of Rayology. This week we'll be talking about radiation. Now I know what most of you are thinking. Radiation is like totally bad for you and can give you cancer instantly. But it's a bit more complicated than that. First off, there are three types of radiation. Beta particles consist of really fast moving free electrons. Gamma and x-rays are similar to light rays but with a lot more energy. And alpha particles consist of two protons and two neutrons, just like a helium nucleus. Now where do we encounter this radiation? Outside! The average radiation dose a person gets is approximately 360 millirem a year. 300 of which come from completely natural sources. Whoa man, you're trying to tell me I'm being exposed to radiation right now and like 50% of it is from mother nature? Good try, but it's actually closer to 83%. Whoa, no way, man. Gaia wouldn't do that to us. Where's this stuff even coming from? Well, you get approximately 200 millirem a year by breathing in this stuff called radon gas, which seeps up out of the soil. Don't try to feed us your government science propaganda brainwash stuff, man. We know Three Mile Island ripped a hole in the ozone layer and is responsible for skin cancer, man. Don't try to blame it on the sun. Listen, Three Mile Island didn't even release that much radiation. People living within a 10 mile radius only received an average of 8 millirem. I am sure those evil corporations want us to believe that. I'm not buying it. Let's go to our Greenpeace meeting. There are a lot of misconceptions about radiation out there, so let's clear up a few more. There are several natural radioactive isotopes found in the soil, such as uranium, thorium, and potassium-40. Now many plants suck these isotopes right out of the soil and deposit them in foods we all love to eat. In turn, bananas contain 130 becquerels per kilogram, while Brazilian nuts have 207. That's right. Tobacco leaves collect a lot of polonium-210 in their leaves, meaning that people who smoke can receive up to 16,000 milligrams per year. That's over three times the allowed dose for a nuclear radiation worker. We'll drop some more knowledge on you after a quick word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Dr. Mohammed, founder and director of Texas Positron Center, or TPC. Here at TPC, we specialize in positron emission tomography, or PET scans. Now, what are these PET scans used for? Most PET scans are done in clinical oncology for the imaging of tumors in the search for metastasis but they're also used in the field of neuroimaging, psychiatry, cardiology, and pharmacology. A certain radioisotope that binds to whatever organ you're trying to image is introduced into the patient's body. This radioactive substance decays by emitting a positron or anti-electron. This positron then annihilates with an electron and shoots out two equal energy gamma rays moving in opposite directions. A 360 degree detector then picks up these photons and reconstructs a two or three dimensional image. Here at TPC, we have a highly trained staff of medical physicists to facilitate your PET scan needs. Give us a call today at 512-555-3141 to schedule your appointment. Texas Positron Center, we radiate because we care. Now that we've got the basics out of the way, we can talk about something a little more interesting. Nuclear power! It's actually not as crazy as it sounds. There are 104 nuclear power plants in the U.S. alone, providing around 20% of our total energy production. Thanks. Now go get my laundry. Nuclear power is made possible by a process called fission. That's where you take a heavy nucleus like uranium-235 and smash it with a neutron, causing it to split. When this happens, energy is released. But how much energy? Let's say you had 10 kilograms of coal and 10 kilograms of U-235. If you were to combust all of your coal, you'd get approximately 350 million joules of energy. But if you were to subject all of your uranium to fission, you'd get approximately 815 trillion joules of energy, meaning you get 2,514,000 times more bang for your buck when using nuclear power. So how do you harness all this energy? There are several types of nuclear reactors, but they all operate on the same basic principle. Once you split the uranium atom with the neutron, they release energy in the form of heat. This heat is then transferred to water, which causes it to boil and convert to steam. This steam eventually goes to turn a turbine, which generates electricity that charges your cell phone. And living next to a reactor doesn't even increase your risk of getting cancer, because you'd only give an average of one milliarm a year. Well, that'll do it for this week's Rayology. Join us next week as we discuss space elevators.